Hello and welcome, or welcome back if you've been here before. Anybody that has been here before will recognise this site. I camped here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm on standby today, so I'm not be camping, but I have brought my budget uh, hot tent with me. I'm going to set it up because after I bought that, I bought dinner for it, which basically turns it into a summer tent because you've got the bug mesh and the, the floor in it kind of thing. So as a trial test, I thought I'd just bring it up here today. And I also treated my GoPro to the, uh, what do you call it, the media mod. Is it a media mod? I think it is. It's the case that goes around it and it's got a microphone attached to it. Uh, you've got access to the charging port, a three and a half mil jack point and something else. I can't remember what it is, but it was more for the wind noise because I've always been moaning about the wind noise and the videos I've been taking. And today it's actually flat cam, so a bit pointless trying to test it today, but we'll even see if the sound quality is any better. The visual quality won't be any better, I can tell you that much, or the content, but the uh, audio might be slightly better. So I'm just going to head over to that wee bit there. The wee fire pit there, that's where I camped last time with the uh, Helm Compact one. So there should be enough space over there and the ground's good enough to get the pegs in to, to let me uh, pitch the... It's a TP tent that was made by Toplander. But we'll go through that later on. There's a the first problem with the media mod. You put that case around it. Uh, you can't actually get the thread of the... Uh, the tripod into the bottom of the GoPro. It's not so handy, you must have to buy an extension, I'm sure there's something available, but that's not the point. It should maybe come with something like that, especially when it's for the, the Hero 12 that has that, and it's the same for the wee tripod there I've got for my phone. Uh, the uh, threaded bit doesn't reach it. So, great start. There we go. Doesn't actually look as if there's been MD here since last time, certainly not having a fire, because that's all the wood. I left behind last time. There you go. If we look about, there's a bit more growth in the ground actually since last time I was up. Could pose a problem for pitching later on with this growth, but I'm cracking wee burn there. Right out into Loch Eck. One of my favourite places, and it's local too. I'm going to start setting up the uh, top lander tent. As I said earlier, the ground should be okay for that. I'm running the GoPro without the media board now, as you've all seen, so hopefully the wind stays down anyway, but I'll just get on with Well, that's the tent all set up. Didn't take long. The initial thing is just spread it out, peg out every point. I think that's the best way to do it. Get the centre pole in and then uh, come round and just readjust all the pull out points to get it running with the seams. Just make sure it's coming straight away from the, the centre of the pole. But this is the, 
a winter tent mind, so it's got the snow skirt on it. You can use it any time of year, of course, and that's why I bought the inner for it that I've got today. So, whilst I've set up this tent before and I've used it once, uh, I've not used the inner, which I ordered later on. So, when I bought this tent, it was uh, 60 quid off Amazon. And then I bought this as well. This is the inner, it's a kind of wee bathtub for the kind of mesh sides on it. So, I'll see how that goes in. I can't mind if it's kind of half a hexagonal shape or whether it's just a rectangle with a bathtub on it so we'll soon find out but I'm just getting familiar with the process and the good thing this tent is it's got a front and back door so you can open up two panels on this side and two on the other because I've not got the hot stove or the stove should I say don't need to worry about where the jack point is which is there that's covered up anyway as I said uh, it's just a trial pitch today see what the inner's like my first ever trial pitch of this tent was actually across the Forsty Road over there, so everything seems to happen up here. <laughs> but why not? A good place to test things out. That's the rain stopped. Just a wee shower. Still flat cam over there, right enough. Might as well just have a look inside. See how many weeds I've captured. Not bad. Good enough for that. Anyway, I'm going to open up the tent, open up the front door anyway, and I'll try this in. See how it sits in. Should be a hook. There it is up there. The inner hangs off of, and it should peg out nicely onto the ground. As I see, I don't know if it's rectangular or whether it follows the angles of the tent, but we'll soon find out. Right. Right, just going to try and set up this inner. Hope there's no wind affecting the microphone <laughs> since my media mod's lying in the, the rucksack. Shower filling in at the top of the lock there. Hopefully, not come to anything. Or I'll be in the tent. I suppose it this thing comes with four pegs. Doesn't feel like it. Fish won't go well. There you go. Right, there you go. Midges as well. These pegs are the same as the tents, or they're not. Five of these. You see them? I don't even know where the camera points with this thing. Anyway, five of these kind of heavier duty candy cane type things. Anyway, I'm sure they'll do for inside. Take this wee bit just goes onto the hook at the top. And there's a wee toggle there you can, you can pull to tighten that up. I'll set it at its loosest until we get the extremities pegged out. Well, that's the inner end to a, to a degree. <coughs> Excuse me. The hills are filling in with that shower. At least the tent's up. That's what it's all about. Uh, Hold these out as far as I can. I take it that zip should really be a central point. Maybe I need to do some fine adjusting. Maybe pull that peg out. I was wondering why it was so saggy there, but I forgot to pull this strap, so half the time I force this up. Oh, it's more like it. Gives the tent a good bit of down force as well. That's sitting a wee bit better. That side's definitely sitting good. I think I just need to work on that uh, back pull-out point, the peg-out point. Now well, it's definitely sitting better now that I've pulled out that back corner. I've actually got that on the outside peg. Uh, but no, it seems to be sitting a lot better. You can see the zips off centre of the pole. I should have moved the whole thing across an inch or two, but I'm not excited about that at this point. <coughs> Entry, it's got a double zip, which is good. The only thing with this is, and a lot of people say on, on similar tents that 
your access points here, but if you had the stove in, uh, you couldn't have both in, but you should really need the inner in the winter time because there's no midges or bugs. So there is a wee conflict there, but if you had this, instead of running this way and running that way in the stove in the corner, you could probably get away with it. So it is adaptable. If you're in any circumstances you need a midgeonet and a stove. Even the stove just to cook on would be handy and it's, it's good fun as well. So anyway, that's the rain on. Just gonna get inside. Make sure it's still waterproof there. Nice and clear down there. Not so clear up there. Have a look at the inner while it's raining out there. It's certainly rectangular. Mesh on this side, mesh on that side. There's no door on that side, so there's only like one quarter of the, the inner you can access via a door. One wee pocket in there. Double zip tie up point. And the same on this side, so that's well, not too bad. I don't know what kind of fabric that is, sweaty I'd say, but there's plenty of ventilation in this, so we're just inside in the nick of time. This is a massive tent, I think it's about three and a half metres in diameter, so plenty of room. I was going to say you kind of lose that outside bit because the the footprint of the uh, inner doesn't go right into the corner, but you can still open the, the second door there and put stuff inside. Obviously you need to zip it back up, you can't access it because there's no doorway. On this side it's just a solid mesh panel, but if you really want to access the extremities from inside the tent you can just drop the clip on that and drop the inner uh, and that will give you access there and put it back up, see if you're getting out the tent for stuff, if you're pushed for a room, but <laughs> that's my 48 litre rucksack just lost in there, plenty of space around there, and even when that door's closed you're out to obviously, the furthers the way peg there, and I've got odds and sods there, I've got my lunch there, put a wee sirloin steak, out the garage in the way here, so might as well enjoy this, although it's just a trial period, it's still getting out, still enjoying the great outdoors, still enjoying something to eat, nothing wrong with that, only thing I'm missing today is the beer, but I can handle that. Here we go, that's the winter tent turned into a summer tent, just like that. Add an extra 40 quid and a bit of material, that shoe sorted. Have a look at it now, I'm out it. Plenty of room, just as so much room as a an inner and a, a one man tent, compact one tent, so like that, excellent. And there's a room out here. And the rain's almost off, so I'll get both both doors open, sorry. And I'll uh, get my steak on I think. Take in the views. There we go, if you've got your sleep mat in there in your sleeping bag, you can just leave it in there and drop that on it. Gives you a bit more room to move about the tent rather than restricted through this uh, one little door you get on this side, so ideal. So we had my steak lunch, yeah, I'm just starting to empty out the tent, so I've done my dishes, 
that stuff out of there, the rucksacks there, so I just need to take out the inner, get that folded into its wee bag and uh, strip it out and that's me ready to head down the road, but no, it's been a good wee insight, I'm glad I took the time to pitch it, it's straightforward enough anyway, I was familiar with the outer, it was just the inner I wasn't too familiar with, although I've got a similar tent and the principles are the exact same, it's quite handy, it's got that wee uh, toggle at the top there that you can tighten up and then you can just unclip it as long as you remember to take that top bit out the eyelet when you're packing it away so it just keeps it all together but no, certainly good ideal, as good as I thought it was going to be stove jack option still there but no, great tent for, uh, for all year round now but it is, it is a massive footprint but you do get rewarded with the, the massive uh, internal floor spaces I suppose so each, each their own devices I suppose, it depends, I'm really enjoying using that Helm 1 that I got but obviously it's compact but you can squeeze it into no space at all whereas this it's like putting up a, a circus marquee I suppose but not quite happy with that for 100 quid, absolutely anyway I'm just going to pack up the rest of it, get the inner out, roll it up, dismantle the outer, roll it up and I'm going to head down the road So. I'd like to thank you for watching, hope you've enjoyed it, hope it's been of value, probably not, but I'm not even camping tonight, but the fact I'm just getting out, a six mile walk, stop, have my lunch in a place like this, that keeps me happy until I get my next camping fix anyway, but I'll probably come back to this spot in the very near future, it is cracking, winter, summer, whatever time of year you come here, as long as it's not blowing a gale or as long as it's not full of midges, but you can't have it all the time, so... Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope to see you back and I'll catch you next time. Cheers. Run the clegs. <coughs> hey, there we go. Top lander. You'll probably never hear them again. They come and go on Amazon, as I say. Oh, that, that, that Clegg drew blood.